Welcome to my Toyota 200 series touring build. Welcome to episode three of my 200 series Land Cruiser touring rig rundown. Today we're gonna to talk about something that's a little bit personal and that's your rear drawer setup and your kind of your rear setup in your car. Now I say this is personal because this is one of those areas in your car that you can really personalize. You sit there, you camp, you look at it, you tinker with it all the time. You get it just how you want it. And to be honest, I'm pretty close to having the perfect rear setup for me in the back of this car. Now I've set up the back of my 200 series specifically for two reasons. The first reason is for overnight or kind of one to three day camping trips for me and one other person. The second reason is to support me on longer trips, so to be able to take spare parts and tools away with me for when I need help. So to begin with, in the back of my car, I've got a set of Drifter rear drawers. And these rear drawers I got secondhand for a bargain basement price, so that's why I ended up with them. But in all honesty, I think I've just ended up with probably the best set of rear drawers you can get for a four-wheel drive. A couple of unique points about these drawers is that they're completely custom made by Drifter down in Gloucester, New South Wales. So they can really be manufactured and set up to suit your specific needs. The second great thing is that there's no metal runners or there's no metal internally in the drawers. The drawers actually run on Teflon slides and this means that you maximize the space of storage within the drawer. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say that the drawers slide as easy as normal drawers with the metal slides, but in saying that, they're not hard to slide either. It's kind of an in-between balance, and they actually work really, really well for what you need. Now, the best part about these drawers has to be this little section here, which is a table that's inbuilt. You can slide it out part of the way for it to be a bench like this, or it comes out the full way and acts as a full camping table. Anyone that goes camping or forward driving knows what a pain it normally is to take a table with you. Having these drifted drawers means that I've always got a table on hand whenever I need it. And the fact that it doubles as a little bench here is even better. So anyone with keen eyes would notice by now that I don't have side wings on the Drifter drawers. And that's because really I bought them second hand and the side wings that came with it weren't meant for this car. In saying that, I actually kind of prefer it without the side wings because it gives me more storage options down each side. I can put larger, bulkier items in there without any problems at all. So on top of the drawers, I've got my Waco 50 litre fridge. And I switched this in and out with an Evercool 65 litre fridge freezer for longer trips. Now this is mounted to an MSA drop slide. I can tell you right now, I do not recommend this product at all. As soon as I put it in the car, it started rattling. And after a quick little bit of Googling, I found out it's actually a common fault with this product. Now, rather than take it back and worry about uninstalling it and returning it, I decided to go at it with an air grinder and I fixed what I would think is 95% of the rattles. I still get some rattles from it, but it's just something I'm gonna have to deal with, unfortunately. Next to the fridge, I've got my favorite addition and that is my Chef 12 volt oven. This thing is a little ripper and I cannot recommend this highly enough. There's nothing better than going away with some frozen pizza slices, some frozen pies, being able to throw them into the oven after breakfast and know that lunch is cooking while I'm out basking in the sun at the beach. What could be better, right? Now, there's a lot of reviews between the Road Chef and the Travel Buddy. There's a really good review that I'm gonna link down below in the description. It's worth a look at. I think personally that the Road Chef is the best of the two and that's why I've gone this way. So behind my oven, I keep my cooker and my two camp chairs. The cooker is a great little unit that I got about five years ago from Bunnings. And honestly, I haven't seen them again until recently. This is in a boot liner bag that Drifter make, and it's a perfect little combination for those one to three day trips that you take. The chairs that I've got are front runner chairs. Now this took a long time to find the right camping chair for me. Normally camping chairs are big and bulky. They're kind of like a table, really hard to pack, really hard to find a place for. I searched long and hard and found the front runner chairs. These things fold up super small and I can fit two of them in the handy carry bag. That means I can always leave them in my car. How perfect is that? Now down the far side of my drawers is my projector and telewave inverter. This is a 600 watt inverter and it's something I didn't specifically go out and buy for the build. It's something I actually had laying around from a previous build. 
To be honest with you, it's turned out perfect. It's a great inverter, it charges laptop batteries, it charges camera batteries, charges phones. It's really been a great unit. And I think 600 watt is just a perfect size to have in the back of your car. Extending a little bit further than my drawers, in the far wing of the car, I've got an ARB twin air compressor. This is mounted to a custom mounting bracket and it was all installed by ARB and connected to my ARB link system that I have in the car. This thing is a game changer, especially when you come to places like this up the beach. If you're constantly in a position of deflating your tires, reinflating your tires, the ARB link system with that twin air compressor works a bloody treat. Now on the close side to me, I keep a muck mat. These things are effectively just a little grass mat. I find this really good when you're out four wheel driving in the dirt, in the sand, if you're camping with your swag, you roll this out next to your car or next to your swag, you can get all the dirt and stuff off your feet. I also have a little clear view table that clips to the edge of the MSA drop slide. So it gives me a little bit more bench space when the drop slide comes down. It's perfect when you want to stop and make a sandwich on the side of the road or the side of the track. It just saves you pulling everything else out of the car. The only other little bit of sneaky storage space I've reclaimed in the back of the car is down here in the tailgate. Normally you keep your jack and all little bits and pieces down in here, but I've removed all of that and keep that stuff in my drawers. So now I've got this open area in both sides of my tailgate. I keep electrical leads, extension leads in this side, and this side I leave open so that when I go on trips, I can put little bits and pieces in there that normally just get in the way. So the left-hand side drawer here is dedicated to tools and spare parts only. It's kind of like my long trip drawer. At the front, I have all of my tools and bits and pieces related to tools. I've got a clear top bag that has all of my air compressor components in it. I've got an ARB lithium jump starter pack, just in case my batteries do go flat. I've got a drifter clear top bag that's dedicated only to electrical stuff. So I have a multimeter, I've got spare fuses, I've got a 12 volt light if I need it, I have crimps. I've got all the little bits and pieces I need to repair anything electrical in the car. Then the big heavy girl is my tool roll. In this, I have every single little tool you can think of. I really just went out and bought sockets, I bought spanners, I bought screwdrivers, I bought pliers, everything you could think of, and jammed as much as I could into my tool roll. If I'm ever working on my car and I can't find something in here at home, I immediately jump on eBay, order what I don't have, and throw it in as soon as it arrives. Other than that, the only other thing I keep in the front of this side of the drawers is my silky saw. This is always in the car, it's really light to carry around, folds down very small and is great for chopping up that firewood or clearing tracks. The back of the drawer is more dedicated to spare parts. The only thing I have in here that isn't a spare part is this. This is something I think should be in the back of every four-wheel drive and it's a collapsible bucket. It comes in so handy, whether you need to change oil, whether you need to collect some rainwater, whether you need to wash up some dishes, it's really handy, really light, and tucks away. In terms of spare parts, I try to carry not too much, but enough to get me out of trouble. I carry a full filter kit for the car, so I have a spare filter for everything. I also try to carry as much fluid as I can. So I carry power steering fluid and brake fluid. When I go away on long trips, I make sure that I carry a full oil change of oil. I've also got other stuff in there, like Stop Leak, WD-40, Inox, just for those odd tricky things that might pop up. Another thing I keep in the back here is my first aid kit, which is something you should always have in your car, I think, especially when you're going remote. And I also keep a tire repair kit, handy at all times as well. The best thing I can recommend that anyone goes and gets is these clear top bags. Drift to make a great range of them, and as you can see, I use them a lot. In here, I've just got all the little bits and pieces. I've got some spare filters, I've got electrical tape, I've got Araldite. Everything that you could possibly need is just jammed into that little bag right there when I need it. The only other thing in this back here is an upgraded bottle jack. The standard bottle jack that comes with the 200 series Land Cruiser is great for a standard car. But as soon as you do something like this where you're putting a heap of extra weight, you've got the car raised, if you're towing a trailer or something like that, you need that little bit of extra power. So I've got a big heavy bottle jack just at the back of my drawers, just in case I need to ever change a tire. Now the right hand drawer is dedicated purely to camping and cooking. It has everything I need when I go away for those short trips that I was talking about earlier. The front of this drawer is really dedicated to food. It's kind of like my pantry. And to be honest, I actually leave food in there at all times. Something that I do leave in there is these dry packed meals. I've got about eight of them in there, and it's good because if I ever get stuck somewhere and we just need that little snack when we're out and away, we can rely that we've got food back here. 
I also keep things like spaghetti, baked beans, some crackers, some muesli bars, just some long life food that I can leave in the car at all times. So if I'm ever away and I do get hungry, or like I said earlier, if I'm trapped on the side of a track, I've got enough food to sustain me for a day or two while I wait for help. So the back of this drawer is purely for all of my utensils and cooking requirements. And I've really tried to keep this as neat and tidy as possible so things are easy to find. I have a bag made for everything and I have a spot for everything back there. In here I have things like butane gas bottles, I've got insect spray, I've got my jet boil so I can boil water when I'm on the go. I've got plates and cutlery and cups, enough for two people so that we can really be comfortable when we're out camping. I'm sure people don't want to know every little bit that's in there, but if anyone does want to know, let me know down in the comments below and I'll make a separate video just based purely on what's in the drawer and how I've got it all organized. The only other thing that I have in the back of my car, which I believe every 200 series that goes camping or four-wheel driving should have, is a rear tailgate light. Now I have a separate video on how that was installed that I'll put a link in the description for, so make sure to go check that out. But that thing is brilliant when you're out camping. Other than that, that's really the back of my 200 series. Now, the big question is, if I could start from scratch, would I set this up the same way again? The answer is no, no I wouldn't. The car really ended up like this because of these cheap drawers. I got these drawers for $250, which is an absolute steal. And I've just kind of built the setup to suit the drawers around it. If I started from complete scratch, I would get an upright fridge to go here, and then I would have two or three drawers stacked on top of each other on this side. The advantage of the upright fridge is that you'd be able to use it at all times, even if you're opening your drawers on this side. The other advantage of the upright fridge is that you'd have a little bit of space between the back seat and the fridge that you could use for storage. And I'd probably look at putting all my tools and spare parts back there and then leave all of my drawers completely empty, completely ready for food, for anything else I could think of. But all in all, we make this setup work for us. And to be honest, it's actually really comfortable when we go away camping. We roll out the awning, we have the swag set up, we can cook, we can eat, we can easily get to anything that we need in the car because we know where it all is and it's all organized. It's something that I've spent a lot of years working on, to be honest. You know, when you're young and you first go camping, there's really crap everywhere in the back of your car and you're not really that bothered about it. But as you kind of get older, you seem to want things to be easier and more efficient. And that's really what I've gone with here. I've got a bag for everything. I have a spot for everything. I like to make sure that I know where everything is in the back of the car so I can get to it at any time. And it's really made camping a lot of fun. So I hope this gives you a few tips and tricks to how I've done my setup that might help you. If you guys have any tips and tricks for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also any questions, throw them down below. So remember, this is only episode three of a nine part series that I'm doing on my 200 series Land Cruiser. If you haven't seen the other videos yet, I'll put the links in the description below. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when the new videos get released. Also, if you like this video, give it a good thumbs up because that helps me out. Thanks, guys.